Hi everybody! Today we are going to continue our focus on reading informational. Remember that's going to be non-fiction. We saw the same genre when we read the article stalagmites, stalactites um, yesterday. So we're going to continue on but we're going to focus on a different standard today. Yesterday's standard, we focused on um, central idea, we focused on objective summary, that means summary without our opinions, and today we are going to move on to RI4, so Reading Informational Standard 4, and that standard says, determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text, including figurative, connotative and technical meanings. So we've worked a lot on figurative language. You know, those are the things like similes, metaphors, onomatopoeia, hyperbole, all of those great things. Personification like we worked on with um, our poem that we talked about earlier this week, the Emily Dickinson poem. Mm -hmm. So we are going to see all of that. However, not all of that will come up in today's article. But when we read a piece of writing, it is very important that we know what we're reading, that we understand it. That's one of the first things we need to make sure we are doing as we read. If things are not making sense to you, it's time to stop, <laughs> slow down, and start over and we need to break it apart into smaller bits and pieces to make sure that we are understanding what we're reading. Now in informational writing that can be much more difficult. Like yesterday's article, some informational writing is scientific. And if you're like me, you're not really a science person. In school, I didn't focus very much on science because it wasn't my interest. So if you don't have a great background knowledge of scientific vocabulary, then it's going to be harder to understand what you're going to read. But that is not the end. We can still make sense of what we read if we focus on the clues in the text. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Now let's get started with our article. Now the article that we're reading today is going to come from your packet. Now this article is not assigned to you today, but I wanted you to take um, a preview look at it before you are assigned the questions um, in the next day that you work at home. The title is Meteorologist. And this again has a cross-curricular focus um, with informational writing and earth science. Now when you hear the word meteorologist, you know our title has a lot to do with our central idea. We learned that yesterday. Whenever you hear that word, meteorologist, I want you to think about the pictures that come into your mind. Now, if a word doesn't come into your mind, maybe we can take apart the word meteorologist. Now, odds are you know what a meteor is. I'll insert a picture right here. Now, we know that meteorologists don't only talk about meteors, but if we really think about what meteors are and where they come from, we can get a better clue about what a meteorologist does. But our text is going to give us a lot more clues than simply our title does. Let's get started. Meteorology is the scientific study of the weather. The scientists who specialize in this area are called meteorologists. Their job is to collect data, make observations about the data, and interpret the data, say what it means. Their goal is to make informed predictions about what kind of weather we can expect. Technological advances over the years has made the work of the meteorologists more and more respected, as they are better able to make fairly accurate predictions. Using computers, meteorologists are able to design and print maps that show approaching weather patterns and how they are likely to behave by the time they reach us. Their maps are filled with colorful symbols that represent different strengths and temperatures of wind, cloud formations, and storm systems. Most weather systems in the United States move across our nation from the west to the east. By tracking weather patterns to the west, meteorologists can reason... By tracking weather patterns to the west, 
meteorologists can be reasonably sure of the kind and severity of the weather that is approaching the areas that lie to the east. Doppler radar stations provide meteorologists with radar images of weather all over the entire United States. They make it possible to anticipate weather systems sooner and to understand their likely intensity. Weather balloons can be sent up into the higher levels of the atmosphere to gather data and take pictures. Satellites have been equipped to relay weather data down to reporting stations from high above Earth. In addition to their high-tech computers and radar systems, meteorologists have some basic weather instruments that have been around for many years. We are all familiar with the first one, a thermometer. A thermometer allows us to measure the air temperature using either Celsius or Fahrenheit scales. In the United States, we use the Fahrenheit scale. An anemometer is used to measure the speed of the wind as it blows. A weather vane or wind vane is used to show the direction the wind is blowing. A barometer measures air pressure. In spite of all these tools, there is always a little bit of mystery involved in the weather. Meteorologists are part scientists and part fortune tellers. So it's very possible that this article had quite a few words, a few vocabulary words that you are unfamiliar with. Perhaps you've never heard them before. So one strategy that we can use is to use a highlighter tool to highlight every word we do not understand or we're not super familiar with. So let's go ahead and do that now. I will scan over and we will see some words that might be unfamiliar. Meteorology, meteorologists, observations, informed, severity, Doppler, intensity, thermometer, anemometer, barometer. The wonderful thing about good writers is they often explain what they're talking about using the words in their text. Now we've highlighted lots of words. For instance, meteorology. It was the first word that we highlighted. And meteorology connects to the word meteorologists. And if we read the sentence following that word, the word that meteorology is included in, meteorology is, that's going to signify that it's about to tell us what the definition is, is the scientific study of the weather. The scientific study of the weather. So let's connect the dots. The passage will tell us the answer, but I want us to connect the dots first. If meteorology is the scientific study of the weather, what do you think a meteorologist is? Now in my head, I think that a meteorologist is obviously the person who studies the weather. And it's about to tell us the answer. We can find it in the passage. The scientists who specialize in this area are called meteorologists. So the article just gave us um, a more detailed definition than I gave you. I said a meteorologist must be a person who studies the weather, but the article really um, got specific and it said it is a scientist. A meteorologist is a type of scientist and those scientists specialize in the weather. Now if we keep on reading, we learn even more about them. Their job is, now we need to pay lots of attention to is, it's going to explain, it's going to give us extra details, is to collect data, make observations about the data, and interpret the data. And if you don't know what interpret means, the author gave it to you. Say what it means. Interpret means say what it means. We can think of the word interpret when we think of different languages. If um, I was going to a different country to teach, I might require an interpreter because I don't speak languages such as Chinese or Russian, so I would need an interpreter to say what it means for me. So it's going to go 
in depth about the job of a meteorologist. It's going to give a lot more vocabulary words that maybe we're not familiar with. So let's skip on down to the third paragraph because we've seen when we have those unclear words, we can use the words around them as clues, as context clues to figure out what they mean. Actually, let's skip to um, paragraph two. Doppler radar stations provide meteorologists with radar images of weather all over the entire United States. Now, Doppler does not have the parentheses beside it to tell us exactly what it means. So we can infer that Doppler is likely a kind of radio station. We can see that because it doesn't give us any more clarification, so it expects us to just believe that it is a type of radar station that provides radar images of weather all over the United States. Then it goes down to talk about weather balloons and satellites and their jobs are to report the weather that the meteorologists end up interpreting, say what the information means. Now the third paragraph does a fantastic job of explaining new vocabulary. It connects the dots for the reader when it talks about thermometer. Now odds are we know what a thermometer is. If we go to the doctor, it's um, likely that we've had our temperature taken by one. It connects the idea of a thermometer in our head with a thermometer that measures the air temperature. Now if we ever say it's 75 degrees outside or 97 degrees outside, we know that because someone has used a thermometer to measure the temperature of the air. And those are the things that the author just wants to make clear in our head. Now it goes on, the author goes on to um, introduce new vocabulary such as anemometer and barometer. Now it immediately goes into the explanation because the author knows that those vocabulary words might be new to us. So an anemometer is used to measure the speed of the wind as it blows. Again, the word is, is our clue. An anemometer is used to measure the speed of the wind as it blows and a barometer measures air pressure. Now it doesn't have the word is, but it does give us the definition. A barometer measures air pressure. So to give a definition, we could say, a barometer is a tool that meteorologists use to measure air pressure. Now it's very, very simple to pick out our vocabulary words that are new and read around them to figure out what they mean. So let's go back to our standard. Standard RI4. Determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text, including figurative, connotative, and technical meanings. Now, connotative meaning refers to a meaning that is implied and not specifically stated. Connotative language is often conveyed by the tone of the speaker. We saw connotative language in Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare. When Shakespeare says, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? We know that the summer's day has a connotative meaning of something pleasant and beautiful. However, beautiful and pleasant, those words are not actually used in that stanza. However, we know by the connotative language that that is what Shakespeare is referring to. We don't have a lot of connotative language being used in this article. We see um, that a lot less frequently in nonfiction informational articles. However, it does appear. We can focus on a little bit of connotative language in the very last couple of sentences. Um, in spite of all these tools, there is always a little bit of mystery involved in the weather. Meteorologists are part scientists and part fortune tellers. So the word fortune teller, that kind of gives us a connotative meaning of someone who doesn't really focus on science, just kind of goes by their gut, um, has the ability to see things that other people do not see. So um, when the author uses fortune tellers, then we get that connotative language and we have to look a little bit deeper. So that, that is a little bit of connotative language that you can focus on and we will see much more connotative languages later on, just not in this article. Now, when we look at the standard, we have figurative, connotative, 
and technical meanings. Now, jump back and look at your article and figure out what category of language we are most often seeing in that article. Figurative, connotative, or technical? Definitely technical. We see technical language so often, especially in um, articles that have a scientific focus like this one. Like I said at the very beginning, this has a cross-curricular focus between informational writing and earth science. So we should just automatically go to technical language whenever we are thinking of science. Um, but if we go back to poetry, would you think that would probably be technical or connotative and figurative? Because I would think that it would be more connotative and figurative because we see similes and personification and metaphor all over the place with poems. So it's really important to know your genre when we focus on this standard. So I hope that this has really helped you figure out how to just take apart the words that you're reading to make sure that you understand it because understanding is key to the enjoyment of reading. Now if you have any questions at all, I want you to comment down below. If you're watching on YouTube, comment down below. And if you're watching on the class website, make sure that you leave a comment in the Google form. As always, I hope that this helped you. Again, our focus was um, making sure that we can determine Determine the meaning of words, no matter how they're used, whether figurative, connotative, or technical. And I know that you're practicing all of those things. I miss you and I will see you soon. Remember, read often and practice well. Bye.